Well, hello there, my friend. I can't help but notice you are here by your lone self in this little tavern. I mean, I guess it can't be helped. Most of these tavern patrons have never seen an animal such as yourself before, and well, they are slow to trust the new, especially in these troubling times. But not me. You see, when I look at you, I see opportunity. Let me guess. You seek to form a war band, and you are here seeking information on the land and possible recruits. Don't look so shocked. Your disguise as a passing wanderer is very good. I just have an eye for talent. I can tell when someone is going to go far in life. As such, I have a request of you. I would very much like to be your second in command, your right hand mammal, as you lead your war band to victory on the battlefield. Now, it's obvious you need a little convincing, so let me give you the information you are oh so subtly looking for, and you can decide if I am the animal you need. If you are not aware, my friend, you are in Northimbra, an ancient land lying between Strathclota in the north and Myrce in the south, home to a wide variety of animals that have lived here for generations. From the meek mice and sparrows you can find in every town, just trying to live their lives, to rarer and more physically imposing beings such as the wildcats, who just love getting their claws dirty. All ruled justly, some would say, by House or Three a royal line that has existed here for as long as anyone can remember. Although, that may be changing. You see, ever since King Red Wolf of Three has gone missing, things have been rather tense. There are many rumors about his disappearance. Some say he saw a vision and he's on a mission for some sacred object of some sort. Others say he is mad or diseased and is kept in the castle depths to avoid embarrassment. Still, others say he was permanently removed by outside forces, and the nation is being kept in the dark to prevent a panic. Either way, his son Reinhardt now rules in his stead and is doing alright, but he is young and inexperienced. And well, many would see this as a weakness to exploit. Perhaps you should consider being a royalist and joining with this new king. There could be great opportunities for one who guides the royal family from this dark time into a new golden age. If joining the forces of the monarchy isn't to your taste, perhaps joining those known as the Free Beasts might be to your liking. The Free Beast movement is a philosophy that has taken over the southern lands of Myrs and is slowly weaseling its way north. Hey! Oh, oh, uh, uh apologies, Rupert. I meant uh, nothing by it. You could have told me there was a weasel behind me. Anyway, this free beast movement is a philosophy that believes that every animal should have an equal chance to prove themselves in society. A meritocracy, I believe it is termed. A philosophy devised and extolled by the foxes of Mears. And although it sounds like a pleasant idea, I can't help but notice that those in places of power in Mears tend to be foxes. Still... Other animals have been known to gain quite a bit of power among the free beasts if they really prove themselves. And out of any faction, they are the ones most likely to get you the most profit. But perhaps, you wish to join with a group who tends to be a bit more brutal in their methods. There are several wild beast clans that might be to your liking. There are many to choose from with wildly different agendas, but I know of a few that may catch your interest. In the Ironstone Hills, you will find vast hordes of rats led by their brown rat overlords. They use the mineral wealth there to craft the arms and armor for their constant raids into Northumbra lands. In the north, the wild shrew clans of Strathclota are preparing to utterly burn Northumbra to the ground. The kingdom and those barbarians have had a long and brutal history, and with the kingdom being weak, they see this as a great opportunity to settle some grudges and in the many old forests that dot the land, the druids protect their groves from those that would defile them, some led by toads who are naturally attuned to magic, and there is nothing more annoying than someone flinging some magic around. What's with that surprised look, my friend? Do you not have magic where you come from? Huh. 
Well, I am no expert, but I can give you basic information about the different types I'm aware of. There is natural and wild magic, both magics allowing you to be attuned to the living world in differing ways, giving you the capability to enhance living things or even summon beasts. Light magic tends to be used by priests, monks, and holy warriors, and is primarily concerned with healings and blessings. Its opposite, dark magic, manipulates people's life force, and is generally frowned upon by most. Its spells always seem to end in a lot of screaming. Unbound magic is a newer form of magic, created by the learned scholars of Northimbra. You can tell because of the ridiculous names they have given to their spells like Bletchy's Cloak of Concealment. Noble magic is said to be the oldest and most powerful form of magic, perhaps where all magic derived from. Although not destructive in nature, it can do amazing things. I once saw someone move from one spot to another in a blink of an eye, saved his life from an incoming sword blow. The spell didn't save him from the arrow he appeared right in front of, but it was impressive to watch nonetheless. Magic aside, Perhaps being a royalist, a free beast, or joining one of the wild beast clans isn't for you. Perhaps you wish to be a bit of a rogue. A little trickery in the towns, a little banditry on the roads, a little piracy on the rivers, a little taking of whatever doesn't belong to you. In the chaotic age we live in, there are plenty of opportunities for individuals to live like kings, from the spoils of those who can't protect what was formerly theirs. Whatever side you choose, my friend, I wish to be a part of it, for I see that you are going places. And to sweeten the pot, I have two friends who owe me a favor, and I can convince to join your upcoming warband. One is a hare, a swift fighter who can move his blades so fast you can't see them with the naked eye. It's why hares tend to be chosen as royal guards after all. And my other friend is a badger. Ah, I knew that would get your attention. You've heard that badgers are the toughest animals around, and this one has her own set of plate armor. Trust me, in battle, nothing will take her down. So, do we have a deal? Do I have the honor of being your second? Fantastic. Now with that all out of the way, let's talk about the most important subject of all. Let's talk about my pay. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the lore of the war game uh, Burrows and Badgers, which honestly, after skimming through, was a really interesting world to read. If you like it, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, press a little bell apparently for my phone. And also, if you really like it and you're inclined, please send a little money my way to my Patreon or my coffee account. The extra money gives me the help I need to work on these stories I love. Thanks for listening, Satch, watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you next time.